So this is our, this is the title of our talk that we are going to do today. Dude, what the fuck in my can? We did a, a similar talk in DEF CON last year, but uh, in, that, in that talk, in the DEF CON call, uh, talk, we were more focused in the Kaline protocol. Okay, in that case, we're going to be completely focused in the Canvas protocol that is used within the, the cars nowadays. So, first of all, typical slides about introducing ourselves. Who are we? Okay, so here's Javier. We are from Spain. That's the strange thing that you can notice in my accent. So, uh, yeah, he's a hardware security specialist, and uh, he loves breaking toys. He's all the day with the dirty hands, with all this toys around him, and yeah, I, there is no day that I don't speak with him, and he said, oh, Alberto, I found a new thing in this new device, and blah, 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 blah. So yeah, he's fucking crazy of hardware. And he's from Cadiz. Have you ever been in Spain? Someone of you? Yeah? Okay. Why are you here instead of being in Spain right now? So Cadiz is in the south of Spain, really, really south of Spain, and uh, yeah, they have uh, great parties, actually. And uh, I'm Alberto, and I'm a pen tester. I work for a huge, for a big company, cloud company. So uh, yeah, most of my time I work in a red team, so my day to day is very offensive, and I love breaking everything. Hardware, software, I like reversing, I like this Aida, Aida is my girlfriend. So yeah, uh, I like this kind of things. So have you seen where we are right now? Where, have, you, have you stayed in the, in the swimming pool? Have you been in the, in the swimming pool? Who have been in the, in the swimming pool already? Only? So OK, so that's my question for you today. If you know that this is the swimming pool that we have just going through the elevator, why are you here? I mean, really, so why are you here today, right now, instead of being in the swimming pool and with these brilliant uh, girls? Okay, so that's the, uh, okay, cool. That's the, um, the index, those are the topics that we're gonna speak about today. We're gonna just do a small reminder about Caline and uh, we're gonna speak about what is the common things that we can buy today. Very, I mean, not, not cheap, not cheap at all, but we can buy some hardware to interact to it with our car. So we can do some stuff, but for us that was not enough, right? So we just wanted to do something cheaper, very cheaper, very cheap, sorry, and um, being able to exploit as much as possible. I mean, speaking against the network itself, not like just some parts of the car. So uh, we, we developed uh, and we made a piece of hardware that we have right here. It is called CHT, Car Hacking Tool. Yeah, it's not very original, I know. But um, yeah, we will speak about it. What are the features that we have? How can we speak directly with the, Cala with the Canvas uh, network and everything? One of the most important things, in my opinion at least, is the statistical analysis. Because we will see later, but each car is a different world. It's a completely different world. Even being the same brand, even using the same brand of cars, it's gonna be diff it's gonna be completely different. The packets that the car sends, the ECU sends between, between within the Canvas uh, network are completely different. Even being the same model but different year, the packets are different. So that is something that we have to deal uh, about, and we did we figured out some kind of a statistical analysis to just go through it. Yeah, we did. Um, kind of attack, takeover, we call takeover to, you will see later. And we are gonna speak some car forensics. Uh, yeah, I have this windows here, but I'm used to it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, 
this is the typical picture that everybody uses when he's going to speak about ECUs. So basically, uh, all the cars are like a subnet of ECUs. It's like our, car, our, our house, our office, that we have different devices connected to a gateway or something. In that case, the devices are connected. It's a broadcast um, network, OK? So yeah, there are tons of different ECUs within a car. A lot of different ECUs. All the ECUs are sending packets most of the time. Like even all the milliseconds, every millisecond, we're going to have some ECU sending a bunch of packets that we want to interpret, we want to know what these packets do, and just try to do something with them that we will see. Okay, so. Uh... No, about the uh, ECUs themselves, uh, it is common that they have a set of unique IDs. UDs are usually attached on the CAN bus, not on K-Line. Uh, not to a specific uh, ECU, but uh, to a function that we could say an ID is broadcasting the current engine uh, RPMs, another is broadcasting the speed, so maybe some data, there are requests, so there is a unique ID for each, uh, we'll call it like a type of data, service, request. Uh, sometimes it's shared between ECUs, but this is just for the canvas. Uh, since we can have a same request from different ECUs, uh, then when we talk about security, uh, to modify the firmware on them, usually if you want to do it the legit way, uh, they have uh, some authentication method, a seed key, uh, to prevent the unauthorized uh, manipulation of the firmware. And uh, most of the times, they have some diagnostics data stored in them, uh, sometimes in the EPRON, sometimes in the flash, uh, either for diagnosis or, uh, well, or just for determining how the behavior of that ECU, depending on which one is, uh, should be like. Then, uh, just a quick thing, uh, we talked about the differences between Canvas and K-Line. K-Line is mainly diagnostics oriented, so not much or any data at all is being broadcasted on it. It's cheap, it works on 12 volts, it's basically a new art, but level shifted to 12 volts due to the length of the wires. The speed is uh, usually 250, can reach that, but it's lower most of the times. 250 would be like some bench. So, I mean, like taking the ECU out of the car itself. Uh, but the canvas, well, actually, it was discontinued somewhere around 2010. Uh, I stopped seeing it on the cars, just the canvas was there. So, canvas is really old, it's nothing new. I think it's from the 80s indeed, but they call it like the future technology, that's okay. Uh, speed should be higher, like one megabit per second. Actually, it's a slower because there are lots of uh, ECUs broadcast in there, so it gets quite slower when you want to do some heavy communicating. The frame length, uh, the payload is just 8 bits, where K-Lang was up to 254 bits, uh, bytes. Sorry. Uh, so still, uh, you need to send more frames to get the thing, so it's, it's better for the noise immunity stuff, but it's not good for the speed. And well, we said on DEFCON that it requires expensive hardware. Not anymore. So maybe you have seen this somewhere. Uh, this was the subject of our talk at uh, DEFCON and at Black Hat Arsenal as well in Vegas. This is the ECU tool. We've been further developing some features for it. It started as a static firmware. And we developed a library for the KLAN. Um, we added some functions, basically what uh, could be done with the main firmware, but uh, now you can just make your own custom firmware using the calls in that library, and we are updating it since we are using it for the, uh, developing the main firmware for it. Yeah, you can download it for free in GitHub. We will give you the, the link for that. Yeah. So, okay, so back to CAN data. Uh, as Alberto was saying earlier, uh, you know, people say like, yeah, can data is like, yeah, so easy, you just attach to it, it's like you are. Well, actually, each car, even the same model from different years, have uh, different ways of parsing the data. I mean, 
uh, it is not structured the same way. So you cannot like say, yeah, I can read Canvas data. Yeah, you can read the, up to level two, but you cannot really parse the data in all the cars. So it's not that universal. Then, uh, well, it is as well wrongly stated that can data is plain. It's not like you can attach to it and you can read like a speed and two points and then the speed. Oh, that's that's what I consider plain. So it's not really plain. It needs to be parsed. Still, I'm parsing it. It's different even from same models, different years. So it might, might not be encrypted, but it's still not plain. And as well, can it so secure or whatever? Can it just an OC level one and two? How can it be secure? It's just, you know, there's no security there. Security should be implemented by the manufacturer itself. So it's like saying TCP IP is safe. It's nonsense. And now, this is according to our experience. Uh, we'll call like there are three kinds of frames inside uh, that goes inside the networks. Uh, we'll call them diagnosis frames. They are usually generated by some diagnosis equipment, and uh, they can trigger some functions that usually would not happen in a normal environment inside the car. Like if you're going to test, for example, the brakes individually, you would be it would be possible to uh, turn on an individual brake on one wheel, or if you want to test the steering wheel, it should be possible to move the steering wheel. That's diagnostics. But usually, well, usually, you know, if it's diagnostic, it does not exist within the car itself. I mean, if you don't have the tool, there's no way you're going to get those packets, those commands. Then uh, system commands, basically, they are the ones that are uh, generated uh, by another ECU. I mean, like, if you want to open your car, you push the remote, then uh, whatever module will say, like, okay, uh, I got the request, so the lights should turn on. That module is sending that frame. That frame would be a system frame because it was not triggered by the user itself, but it was triggered by another module as a consequence for another action. So sometimes uh, these system commands are the same as the user ones I will talk now, or even diagnosis, but not every time. Then user commands, uh, that's uh, pretty straight. Like you push a button, then some module gets the request, it will broadcast the command for that request. Now, uh, ELM 327, uh, that's uh, the most commonly used uh, IC for diagnosis. It's like you can find it on eBay for 10 euros, stuff like that. It supports a lot of uh, protocols like yeah, the CAN, KWP, even the pills with modulation, which is used on some old cars. So, and it's handled by AAT commands. I mean, serial. That it's easy to implement. So, uh, it allows use of an enhanced diagnosis, which gives you access to some security features. That's good as well. Yeah, it works on AT, easy to use. But, actually, I will show it again. Check the speeds for the canvas. Just a standard extended ID, but 500 kilobaud or 250 kilobaud. So, what happens if you want 125? Like, for example, I've seen on some internal canvases for frame or for body. What happens with that? You cannot use that. Or what happens if you have some 800 kilobaud? You cannot use that. Or if you need to do something else, you can't. So. The CHT, what is it? It's just some hardware based on the Arduino Mini Pro that gets attached to any canvas, any speed. The hardware uh, we have brought here is Alpha, which means it's like a so-so looking PCB. It's live. We are always uh, adding new stuff, taking other stuff out. So we need it to be a field thing. This is actually how it looks. I guess some of you might have seen that photo already, but uh, we will see the PCB leave in a few minutes. This is actually a board that is being developed. Uh, it's supposed to ESM, so you can see the difference in the size when you put everything together in a two-layer PCB. It gets way smaller. And we will talk it in a few minutes as, about it in a few minutes as well. Uh, we are even developing another board that has uh, in-system firmware update capabilities. 
so you can just uh, attach the device uh, to uh, whatever, forget about it, then you develop the firmware you want for it, and you can upload it remotely. I mean, uh, we're using a one euro microcontroller with a remote update for firmware. So, what does it do? Well, it has uh, some menus we will see as well briefly in a while. So you can set up completely all the features of the Canvas interface. Uh, it has memory for the options, so you don't have to set it up on every startup. Well, that was obvious. It can capture and inject Canvas data. And uh, when the bus is full at 500 kilobits per second, I mean, like, interframe space is the minimum, which is like 32 milliseconds, if I recall it right. Uh, it gets 92% of the data that is in the bus, which is still good. It can inject errors and manipulate the frames on real time. It can generate an active IDs report, which means basically that we can see some uh, what IDs are broadcasting, not one-time IDs. For that, we use another method. It can perform a really basic analysis of the data that is being transmitted on the bus, like uh, if the what's the length of the payload, if it's dynamic, static. It can store logs that uh, then can be sent to a backend for some more advanced uh, analysis that Alberto will talk about in a few minutes. Yeah, and uh, with additional hardware, which is like nothing, we will talk about it later. You can just update the firmware in fields, so you can add new stuff, like have different firmwares if you run out of space. It's really flexible. So, the hardware itself. But it's, as I said, it was just some uh, Arduino Mini Pro, some wireless interface. It's up to you. You can use from Bluetooth to GSM. Uh, this is actually a GSM shield. So it costs uh, like around 15 euros. This is useful development. Uh, in the end product, it would be only the white chip we can see here. And uh, that costs around 7 euros. And then you have GSM on the device. So it's still not that cheap, not that expensive. It's good. And the Canvas stuff, basically, so. It's free. I mean, it's free. It's cheap. It's very cheap, I guess. But then, uh, as we were talking about, uh, Canvas data is not universal. So if I want to know uh, how my car works, then how could I do that? Yeah, so that's the problem that we were speaking previously. It's like, okay, I have my car, my specific model, the specific year, and I want to know, for example, what is the payload that I have to send to open the door? No, some juicy, juicy thing, open the door, or activate, uh, I don't know, doing some cool stuff. So what happened in my specific model? How can I know what is the ID for my model, my brand, my GRF car that open the doors. How can I do it? So we thought about a statistical analysis because right now when you do a capture in the cam in the campus uh, in the campus um, bus, uh, we just receive uh, tons of packets with different ID with different payloads, but we don't know what these IDs are doing. We don't know what is the the action that is being performed with this ID. So yeah, with we thought about, okay, let's gonna do some statistical analysis. Let's gonna think like a car, the logical of a car. What a car does. I mean, in what moment do you think that a car is gonna send the packet to open the door? At the beginning, at the end of the use, I think that if you're gonna open in the door, you're gonna use it at the beginning of the, of the trace, of the capture, of course. It's not gonna be at the end, because you are supposed to be inside the car if you're, if you're, if you're riding the car. Okay, so we thought about this kind of things, and then we thought about, okay, so right now, what is interesting for us to know exactly what ID is performing this specific action? So, yeah, we, thought, we, we checked about type of data, okay? So we wanted to difference between the typical commands, like, okay, the lights are on, the lights are on, the lights are on, the lights are on. I don't care about that. 
It's like just status uh, data. I don't care at all. I want to find commands, really actions that we can inject in the in the bus, in the network. Okay, so yeah, the thing is that uh, there are, like I told you, some random data. There are some text zooms and this a lot of bullshit. So yeah, one very important thing is determining the frequency. Because if I'm sending like a packet saying, okay, the lights are on, the lights are on, it's gonna be more or less in the same frequency. It's not gonna be like open the door. That ID, that ID with the payload, because I want to remember that uh, a canvas packet, a canvas frame has the ID and the, the payload the, later, okay? So some ID can be, okay, the lights are on. And the payload can say, uh, the light that is on is the light who is in the front of the car or in the front right, the front left, whatever, okay? So in that case, we want to know the frequency so we can just uh, forget about all the packets that are being sent with the same frequency because that packets are not useful for the things that we want to do. So yeah, that's the thing. The term is a command, it's only sent once. So yeah, we want this kind of things. So yeah, the thing about doing the statistical analysis is improving the comprehensive of the of the of the ideas that are sent in the in the in the network okay that's more or less that's what is the statistical analysis so yeah why we do that because obviously it's like the things that i told you like if we can if we want to open the doors we will send that command only once okay if we're going to open the windows for example we're going to be uh, sending some specific id for that just for a specific frame of time, okay, just a specific um, time, but then it's gonna stop. So we can think how the car is, how is the logical of the car, the logic of the car, so we can know more or less what packets are for each, um, each action. So, and yeah, that's another thing that we saw a lot. There are tons of packets that are just the same all the time, but with a payload zero, for example. And in some moment, that, that packet, starts being exactly the same, same ID, but the payload is one in some byte. So it's like the typical thing like, okay, uh, my lights, I'm, going, I'm, I'm riding the car and my lights are off, but it's, it's getting dark, so I'm gonna turn on the lights. And we said this minimal difference, it's like the zero to one, but the ID is the same. Okay, I want to be clear in that, like we have the ID of the packet and then we have the payload. So it doesn't mean that the ID is turn on and turn off the lights, it's different. It can be the same ID, but with different payload, okay? And yeah, that's another option that is very useful. Imagine that the car is turned off, so the canvas is not uh, sending any, di any data. So what we can do is just, uh, just uh, connect our device to the, to the canvas network and just send, send, in, send some stupid packet. To the, to the network. The ECUs are gonna re receive the packet and I'm gonna, I'm gonna start sending some stupid commands like, oh, what is happening here? What is happening here? So we can just get a log of all these IDs and say, okay, I don't care about these IDs in the real capture. We're gonna say, okay, we're not gonna take in care about those IDs because our IDs of status IDs from, from the, the ECUs. So we did a, okay, you know, the Arduino that we are using have uh, two kilobytes of RAM. That's like uh, this thing, okay? It's very cheap, that's why we use it, and actually we use it too for the challenge of being developing C code, even assembly codes eventually, because we wouldn't have enough RAM memory to recollect all the frames that we were receiving. So it's kind of cool just to having to deal with these limitations, these limits. So, yeah, we created a website for doing the analysis itself. It was impossible to do it in this thing. So, yeah, I, it's just an easy website, you, uh, login. You can, you can use it. I mean, we are gonna, we're going to pull this, the, the, the website with the code. And the code, uh, basically, that it does is like analysis, analysis uh, to, the, um, to the data. This is our current analysis that we have already. We have four different analyses. One of them is just to list the most used ID. If an ID is used so many times, it must be probably a 
stupid ID. I mean, a stupid that I, uh, uh, ID that I don't care. An ID of status, status or something like that, okay? So the other, the other, the other analysis that we, we did is just the period, periodicity of the active ID. It's, if an ID is being sent all the time, the same frequency, I don't care about that. We're gonna look for commands, actual commands of the car, like open the door, turn off the lights, or whatever, things that can be interesting. And yeah, the same thing, packet send over a timeline, and that is very important. Uh, possible match with some commands. And not only that, there are some packets, I mean some frames, that the ID is the same, but the payload, it's an incremental byte. It has an incremental byte. So it's like A, B, C, D, E, whatever, okay? It's, it's like that all the time. I don't care about those packets. I'm not gonna be wasting my time taking, uh, I mean, trying to understand what that packet is going to do because most of the times that packet is not the lovely command that we are looking for. So yeah, let's gonna do the demo. I don't have, I hope to have internet here. Yeah, we have. Actually, we, that's awful, we connected to a, to a, net, a network, Wi-Fi, who was unprotected and it's called Black Hat Asia, so please, be nice. No, yeah, it's okay. I know this is not DEF CON, but I don't believe in you guys. I don't trust you. Oh, okay, so, oof, that's horrible. Okay, so as Alberto was saying, uh, usually uh, when you see an ID that is being sent like overall uh, many times, uh, it's not interesting. But still, you should uh, look at the payload because uh, it might be the case that uh, an ID is being used for commands and for status report, which would mean if you do a statistical analysis of the whole data, and let's say, let's keep it like simple, uh, there's just one uh, command uh, payload and then there's some uh, fixed uh, payload that will send some status data. I don't know, let's call it like A. So if you do a statistical analysis to the whole payloads that are being broadcasted, uh, then you will see that 99.999% is this static data, but there's one payload that will be different, that will probably be a command. Uh, hold on, we're having trouble with the Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we better do that. <laughs> Let's see if it works. Yeah, uh, home net. Uh, uh, why you do this? Yeah, what, what about hackers? We are. Yeah, there's like it's very a very simple website. You can just upload the can traffic that you can capture with this software. I mean, with this hardware and. They, I have I developed some Python uh, code that is gonna do the um, the analysis itself. I already have. Oh, this is awful. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have already uploaded this. Okay, I can try to upload the the scan. I mean the the log that I have, but I don't care. It's the same. So, like we can see here, we have the this ID have been sent like three thousand times. The ID two three seven. We have all the IDs. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, and here we have the, interma, the interval average. Okay, so this ID has been sent in 72 milliseconds. So I don't care about this ID. Maybe I care about the IDs that are at the bottom. Oop, here. Okay, maybe those IDs are more interesting. Maybe those IDs are commands. Yeah. Yeah, I know that you can maybe not see very well. I love colors and these things. And then here you have the percentage of the total with the same, the IDs. Here you can see, actually, very easily, this ID 41B has been sent a lot of time. And actually, according to our test, it, have a, it has a counter, an incremental byte. So you can see. You can see it here. In the byte three, there is an incremental counter. So probably this is not important for us. Actually, doing this test, we fi finally got the the packet who was uh, in charge of opening the the door. So the door of the car. So that's that's nice. So yeah, go for it. No, yeah. I hate this virtual machines. Oh. Okay, so uh, basically we know that injection is possible, that is nothing new, we can uh, log the data, that is nothing new. So let's talk about attacks, actually on Canvas. So why using attacks? Like uh, Alberto was saying, uh, some frames are being sent periodically. Let's, let's see, let's, start, uh, let's get uh, stick to the lights. We're saying we want to turn off the lights, but it comes out that lights are being, uh, the light, the status, what they should be, is being broadcasted like every 10 milliseconds. So if I keep on injecting the lights off, then I'm going to have some crazy stuff, like lights are going to be like turning on, off, on, off, because I'm saying like turn off, uh, and the system is saying turn on. So after all, it's either not going to work at all, or something's going to smell like fried, like magic smoke. You know, if you make things go like crazy. So injection is not like, uh, yeah, it's so easy. Canvas is so easy. You just inject data and everything works so wonderful. It's not like that, exactly. And then uh, uh, some modules require some conditions as well. Like, let's say uh, if you want to use the parking brake, then the speed should never be higher than zero. Because, you know, you cannot use a parking brake at 100 kilometers per hour. So then what happens if I want to use it? It doesn't work. Okay, yeah, sure, I can inject the turn on the parking brake, but it's not going to happen. So still injection is not just like that easy. Yeah, inject stuff. So what's the ID takeover? As we were talking earlier, we want to do something uh, about that, about uh, not being able to do the stuff. So. Uh, we developed an attack that is uh, basically just taking down frames. We just take down the frames we want and then we inject our own. So, uh, and we do it in a way that uh, it's not considered like a real error, it's just like something weird. We will see it in a while. So basically, what the, how does it work? We select a target ID we want to replace, we use uh, the CHT, we attach it, uh, uh, it's four wires, just two for the canvas and two for feed. If we use a battery, then it's just two wires. But since it should be uh, possible to have it for long term in the car, we are using four wires. So uh, then once the ID uh, is transmitting, uh, we will basically uh, real time read the bits of the ID. Once we see there's a match, then we will, we will inject an error. So we will put down the frame, and then we will inject our own frame. And it, you know, uh, there's some error checking possibilities according to the CAN uh, specifications. They are not using it. You will see it. But it just keeps forever trying to transmit. Uh, so, well, that's basically it. Why does it work? Uh, due to the arbitration that is used on Canvas, it is always possible uh, to put the, the bus in a low state, which is dominant, since that's how arbitration works. Like many modules are trying to uh, fight to get the ID, uh, 
uh, his ID, then if another module has a ha lower ID, which means uh, uh, it's dominant uh, on bitwise, then uh, the other one, if it's trying to set level high but it reads out, level is low, it will stop. So basically, at the point about this is you can set the bus low anytime. And as well, yeah, just for if this is as well by specification, first thing that is being broadcasted, uh, well, not broadcasted, since first thing in a frame, in a canvas frame, is the start bit. So uh, when the bus is like silent and I see it's going uh, low, I know something's going to happen. And then what's the second thing? The ID. So I can just, before anything happens, I know the ID. Before even I know what's the length of the payload, I already know the ID. So I don't need to wait much more. Okay, I get the ID, I check it. Then, what's an error? We said that we can put the bus in a low state, dominant, anytime. And how do you signal an error? By putting down the bus for uh, 12 bit times. So I can inject error anytime. It doesn't matter. I can always put it down. And as well, uh, errors, uh, well, actually, this, uh, they can be reported by the own module on real time. Uh, since the modules are uh, echoed, uh, echoing themselves to check if the data they are trying to pull out is actually making it out to the bus. So if they see the data they are trying to pull out is not making it to the bus, they will just signal this error stuff. Like we can see in this image, the, on the current RX, this is like, let's say one model, it's reading from the bus on package, when it's transmitting, it will see its own echo. So it is, uh, it is the one that should inject the error. Now, uh, we're using the uh, uh, microchip uh, MP NCP2515, uh, yep, uh, which has the possibility to signal a start of frame. Uh, so it makes it quite easy uh, to know when a frame is starting. But actually, uh, due to the fact that its signal is just a 62.5 uh, nanoseconds, we had to develop something that was even better. We no longer require that. So now we're going to see a demo. OK. So OK, uh, zoom out. So basically, this is a uh, car ECU. This is the subject uh, that we are going to use with the demo. Logic analyzer we're going to be using to see all the stuff. Just, just one thing. We couldn't. We tried to bring here a car, but it was not possible. Okay, we're sorry about that. That's was the only thing that we can do. It's like bringing a ECU, but we can, of course, attach to the campus with this device. It's the same. It's just two two wires. That's all. <laughs> well, uh, without one ECU, well, you know, it has a few more. So, and actually, this uh, small device is. Uh, something we made uh, for as a serial link and for updating the firmware remotely. That's it. What we were talking about earlier. This is a Bluetooth module. This is an SD card used as buffer, and the fancy red light is the Arduino. Yeah, yeah. We can see your hand. Yeah. So, and then this here. I'm not gonna move it. I will take everything apart, and we will see it when the demo is done. This is the CHT that is actually just attached by Canvas with these two wires uh, to the ECU and the power supply, which has the other two wires. So uh, let's get back to the computer. Hey, computer, please. OK, so as I said, this is serial. So we're going to use a serial terminal. It's here already, OK. So we're going to connect to it. This is Bluetooth, actually. And then, 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 then. OK, let's reset this. And now, OK, we are going to use uh, the serial shell. So we are going to reset this. OK. So basically, that is the interface for the CHT. Let's check how the bus looks like. 
before doing anything? So, one second. So, yeah, we can actually see that frames are being sent. Uh, uh, uh. Like, yeah, let's zoom it out. Some frames are being sent there with some IDs. So, I mean, like, there's traffic, right? Yeah. So, let's say, okay, we like ID 288, for example. Okay. So, yeah, so you see, it's actually just there. Yeah, you can see it clearly, I guess, the 288. Yeah, so, yeah, and you can see how the data looks. Like, yeah, we can see some frames. It looks so nice, so uh, symmetric. Yeah, let's go for it. So, let's configure this. Okay, so we said 288, and let's inject, for example, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. Okay, so let's see what's going on. Oops, now it doesn't look so symmetric. Like, what, what's this? Okay, so actually, if you see, uh, 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 yeah, this is stuff down here, okay. The white one, this one, uh, indicates that we have detected that start of frame, which would be this, and then each small one is the bit counting. So actually, uh, if this doesn't move anymore, we can see we are counting the bits in the middle. So if we get a match, we inject an error. So it doesn't make it. We're just getting errors. Yeah, so, yeah, and uh, when we are going to inject our own stuff, you know, uh, since this is buffered, uh, the canvas stuff, if we were, like, sending out the frame and it got buffered, then we found out that we would put down our own packet. So we had to listen as well on the, our own TX line for the, for the canvas, and when we detected that the level was low both on TX and, R and RX, it will be us trying to send the packet. So that's why here we can only see one spike. We have detected it's us uh, trying to send the packet, so we stopped. But actually, the ECU was trying to send as well at the same time, so we got an error. And uh, then we need a little bit more debugging, but that one made it through. And this was us here with our own payload. And you can see that when it's another ID, it's just skipped. Like we check it's different, we don't put it down. So basically every time we detect the other one, we just put it down. Yeah, like lots of errors. Yeah, there are a lot other options you can see in the interface, like inject a specific command. Okay, we can just take out uh, a specific ID and then we can inject our own ID. So we can just generate that the flights, I mean, the lights get crazy or something like that. Imagine that you are, uh, what? Uh, these are the configuration options we were talking about earlier. Like, you know, uh, there's some stuff, but it's just the basic stuff for the Canvas interface. Yeah, the thing that you can do as much as you want. Your imagination is your limit here. And of course, it's very, very important, the, uh, the statistic analysis, very important, because we need to know what ID is doing a specific task. If we don't know that, we're gonna just do a denial of service to a specific ID that we don't know what it's doing. Can be wrong. Okay, so, let's change to the... And, uh, well, actually, uh, you know, we just saw a small part, but uh, we did the logic. Uh, after a while, this was working. And if you noticed, it was still broadcasting on the network. I mean, uh, when it detects uh, up to 254 errors, it should stop, but it does not stop. It just keeps on retrying uh, forever. So you can just keep on injecting and putting down frames forever, which should not be possible. 
And now uh, about FlexRay, well, that's the future. That's the real future, not Canvas. That is a recent protocol. It supports up to 10 uh, megabits per second. And uh, the working principle is basically the same as Canvas, arbitration. And yeah, the ID is at the beginning as well. So. OK, so just uh, I'll, let's speak a little bit about forensics. How can I retrieve the information of a car? of a crash in a car, of an accident. Okay, so every car has a black box right now. Nowadays, all the cars have a mini black box with information. All this information that we are speaking about, we can store part of this information in, the, in this black box. This information is usually stored in the airbag ECU. Okay, so we can just try to retrieve this information and we can use that information in court or we can use this information just I don't know, just to check. We can buy random ECU, airbag ECUs and know what happened in the crash of that guy, okay? So yeah, like I told you, it's, uh, it's in the airbag ECU and usually it is stored in the EEPROM, okay? So yeah, there's, uh, there are some software and some hardware that can retrieve this information, but usually it's, a, it's not free. Actually, it's never free. So, for the, in this uh, in this specific ECU, it, the brand is Bosch. Okay, the brand of the ECU is is Bosch, and uh, Bosch have a tool who is called yeah have a tool that retrieves the information from a from a ECU. We can uh, retrieve that information in three different ways. Okay, just connecting uh, to, uh, to the ODB port. Okay, and we need authentication. We can connect with the airbag module directly, so just having the ECU and connect directly to the ECU, like, like we are connecting right now. And the other, more difficult uh, way is reading directly using the EPROM. Reading the EPROM directly, dump the information of the EPROM, try to parse that information. The problem about that is that, I mean, the good thing about that is that we don't need authentication. So that's cool. We don't need to just do the seed key that it usually needs to be performed if you want to connect through the ODB port or uh, using directly the airbag module. So yeah, the ODB port is one of the options. Connecting directly to the uh, ECU is the other option to access to the data who is in the EEPROM. And the other option is, OK, I have the EEPROM, so that's going to dump everything. So this is the software I told you about, software and hardware. So it costs like 9,000. So yeah, we are like students. We don't have uh, this kind of money. So actually, we downloaded the, um, the, um, the software. Do you remember? Yeah. We downloaded the software. Yeah, go to the other machine. That's going to show everybody the software so they can buy Boss products. Yeah, that's the software. OK, yeah, let me. Yeah, the Boss Grass Data Retrieval Tool. So the things. Uh, it requires an activation. So I just took a look, okay? And I saw that it's waiting for a file with extension, extension CTF. That was so funny. CTF, capture the flag? Yeah, I was trying. I just generated a random, uh, random file. In that case, this is the random file, and open it. And I don't know why the calc was executed. I don't have any idea about why this happened. I'm so confused. So. We were not able to use the, uh, this, this software. This is the last version of, that, of the software, OK? So we were not able to use that software. We, so we tried other things. What? No, I just want to go back. Mm -hmm. OK, yeah. Yes. OK, so yeah, what about poor guys? So guys that doesn't know how to activate this software, like we don't know. So yeah, okay, next. So yeah, there is a list of supported vehicles. So uh, in our case, a, a client contacted with us, a customer, and um, Mercedes, Mercedes was not in the supported vehicle. So we were not able to use this tool to extract information, to parse the information, and to give the client or the customer um, a report, okay? so. What, yeah, that was like our phase. What are we going to do in that case? So what we did is uh, read directly uh, the, the EEPROM, okay? You can see the EEPROM down here. 
this this small chip. Okay, so we dump the the EEPROM, and we had information, but it's just a binary. We didn't know how to parse this information. We didn't know, okay, the first three bytes are going to be the speed of the car one second before the crash. And the next three bytes are going to be the speed two seconds before the crash. And this other part of the file is the RPM at the moment of the crash. We didn't know that. So what we did is to reset this, this, um, this file, this dump. We reset it to the default uh, moment. And we did a diff. So in that case, we could know what are the exact parts of the file that, have, that were being modified. OK, so we know that that specific part contains information, relevant information for us. OK, so yeah, we knew that some parts were changed. So the, ne the next step that we did is just to use this program. We know LS. It's like a program that you can just try to print some graphics of the of data so we retrieve some um functions okay so we if there is a, 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 a crash there's going to be a really huge break the car is going to is going to stop eventually so if we have we had some graphics who were ascendant and other one who were descendant so in that case if there is a crash we only cares about the descendant uh, graphics for for the speed i mean the speed is going to be it's going to go to zero we sort it and we got here it totally looks it was the only uh, descending uh, graphic that we had so after the diff of course so yeah we realized that that was the specific speed during the accident so yeah it was kind of cool how to be able to even not having the way in which the, the, the information is sparse, we could do something to figure out. So, okay, so uh, about uh, the ECU tool, okay, uh, we will be soon releasing a new revision of the hardware and a new revision of the software. This one already has it. Uh, it has Canvas, so it's going to be working with Canvas, with K-Line, and should be working with Lean as well. Uh, we had already uh, done the implementation for Canvas for EDC 16 on this one. We will release that as well. Uh, yeah, as Alberto said, we are working on the crash data retrieval, so uh, that's uh, still in the works. Um, we should be able in a near future to get the crash data from our cars using the ECU tool and then parse it. Yeah, I didn't say that, but we are working about doing this uh, parse of information in an automated way. But the thing is that we don't have all the different airbag ECUs to be able to know how that information is stored, how to parse this information. We need it's a very manually job to know, okay, I have this dump of this specific ECU, this specific model, okay, let's see how the information is stored in the EEPROM. So if you have some airbag ECUs and you don't want it, or even if you have a car right now, you want to just take out the ECU and give it to me, it's okay. So, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's okay when... yeah, so, okay, I'll finish. Uh, the we're gonna have the CHT emulation with basic functionality, not the glitch itself. But should anyone uh, want to see uh, to get the code for it, uh, we would send it. And the optional over the air firmware. Uh, so everything, all the updates, the hardware, of course, uh, should be around ten dollars. And uh, everything can be downloaded from our GitHub uh, repository. So, yeah, uh, we're going to get back to the camera. We're going to show a little bit the hardware now unconnected. So, let's see. So, zoom fuera, por favor. Okay, so, basically, this is the... No la muevas, por favor, stop. Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> This is the CHT, 
So basically how the injection was done for the arrows, of course, we needed to drive the stuff manually. This is the MCP2515, which is the canvas controller. It's, co it's handled by SPI, by the Arduino here. Then we have the, the driver for canvas for the legged way, uh, I mean for normal frames, which is this one that is being used for the, by the canvas driver. And then we have this another canvas driver that is directly connected to digital pins on the Arduino. So and uh, what we are basically doing is we are using uh, normal canvas for injecting our own frame and this uh, extension for injecting the errors. And, you know, basically that's the SD and little more. Like uh, some LEDs here, some power supply here. And the remote firmware update is pretty simple. It's just, as I was saying, uh, one microcontroller, Arduino Mini Pro. Here's an SD that acts as buffer. Uh, we could add further, like, uh, several firmwares inside the SD so you can quickly change between them and just a Bluetooth module. It could be anything like GSM. Yeah, and yeah, and actually this is the GSM development shield, as uh, I was saying earlier. This is the chipset itself. This costs around 7 euros. It's a SIM 900. It's quad band, so it works worldwide. And it's really small, like you can see my finger. So, yeah, second. Okay, so yeah, that's it. Uh, oh, can you? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, that's... Thank you, everybody, for being here today. Thank you for joining us. Go to the pool, please. Uh, stop just going to this conference. Go to the pool. It's awesome. And thank you to all those who want to understand how and why things work. Thank you very much. <laughs>